What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial and today I'm going to show you on how to make a character controller Basically, just a uh, player controller that you can go ahead and play around in third person It's going to be a very easy tutorial to follow, so let's get started Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to need our, you know, our character rate um, Of course, uh, this video is not going to go over the process of making a character But um, if you already have one, just import it or if you have one from the marketplace, um, just go ahead and and put it into your plate okay so the next thing that we are going to do is basically create a new blueprint so what we're going to do is just right click and create a new blueprint class and this is going to be a type character because it already have the ability to walk around and a capsule component and it's called a mesh etc it's going to be easier for us basically so let's go ahead and create it it's going to be bp on um, my character for example uh, so it's a bit easier uh, my character to oh, tutorial and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up So you can see that we have the capsule component and the mesh like already set and the character moment component too So the first thing that we get to do is apply our character into the mesh So in the skill to mesh options, we're gonna find our character in my case It's this one and then we're gonna go ahead and replace it um, minus 89 and then also rotate it uh, around 90 degrees there we go and then also make it a bit smaller there we go because for some reason my one is very big and right into 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7 so it will need to be facing the arrow and be correctly placed uh inside the capsule component basically okay the next thing that we're going to do is go into um class defaults and disable use controller rotation yeah unless you want to make a strafe movement so for example like a fortnite movement where you turn the camera and the character automatically turns um well leave that uh, enabled or if you want to do it like more for uncharted that you can rotate the camera and then when you start moving it will pace where it's moving uh disable this in my case it's gonna go more in the like default controller thing so i just disable this okay but it's preferable uh a personal preference okay all right so let's start implementing some mechanics uh, in the event graph so for now we're gonna be using any of this so we can go ahead and delete all this um, we're gonna go pound save now we will need to set up new inputs so what we're going to do is go into edit and private settings and what we're going to do is set up all the input access uh, so we can move our player okay so we're gonna go into the input and you can see that we have the action mappings and access mappings in our case, we're going to be using the access mappings as it will give us a scale value of our input so we can move the player. Now, because I'm, uh, I have a project using the third person template, I already have some setup. You can use, you know, this ones, but I'm going to show you how to create ones from zero just in case you want uh, you're creating it from a blank project. So I'm going to enable. Uh, so you add one more. And it's going to be go forward and backwards. Okay, basically this will move uh, forwards and backwards, of course, <laughs> and we're going to select this key and then press W in your keyboard and you will be able to move our player. Uh, now the scale has to be one as it's going to be a positive force uh, forwards. I'm going to add a new key on here, which is going to be S and then the scale is going to be minus one. So it's a negative force. So it will move backwards. Then I'm going to add uh, more one. It's going to be go right and also left and the same here so a is going to be actually minus one and then another one is going to be d with one so, all right so now we can close this up and on here in our blueprints in the event graph we can just go ahead and add a go forward axis event and you can see that we have r1 so now what we have to do is add some movement so we can just Go from here, add movement, input. The target is going to be itself, as is the whole actor, and the axis value will go into scale value. Here's where we're going to define if it's forwards or backwards, and the wall direction. Well, we're going to get the um, control rotation, as is basically where the player is pretty much facing and stuff. And we're going to go ahead and right click and split it so we have all the individual axes. So now what we can do is just um, get the forward vector and then we're going to go ahead and also right click and split it. So 
basically we're gonna be turning on the Z axis so just plug the Z into the Z and then this will get us a, a vector so we can just plug it in into the world direction so actually if now I compile and save and we'll go into world settings and in our game mode I just gonna drag my BP over here into the default pawn class so it will spawn as my player so if I press play well you can see that um, the camera is broken we have to add a camera basically but you can see that i can move uh forwards and backwards already which is really cool so let's quickly go into the viewport and i'm gonna add a camera so in the capsule component you set a camera boom sorry they changed actually the name it's very annoying uh so it's a spring arm so we're gonna be adding one of this and you can see that it just created a line now you'll see in a moment for what it is, uh, what that is, <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and select the spring arm and add a camera, a normal camera, inside of it. So make sure it's child. And now you can see that it plays on the end of this spring arm, and it's basically the spring arm is just the thing that we're gonna rotate uh, towards the center of our player, and you can change values such as the target arm length, etc. In my case, I'm gonna leave everything as default. 300 is gonna be pretty cool. And the camera is, yeah, there we go, it's, it's perfect. So now if I press play, you can see that I can move forwards and backwards. Now I think they're going to do, uh, because also the thing I've mentioned uh, before about the type of controller is going to be strafe or more like uncharted like free. So we're going to set the character movement component and go into orient uh, rotation to movement. And this will just uh, basically rotate the controller in the direction which the player is moving. Now, because the camera right now is pretty much locked, it looks really weird. But uh, when we have some input on our camera, it will look fine. So let's now go ahead and apply the uh, right and left forward. So right, left axis. And we'll do pretty much the same. So we can just go ahead and copy this and paste it over here. And the things that could be different is that, well, first of all, remember to plug in the scale, uh, the axis value. And now the thing is that the uh, axis is going to be different. So instead of the get forward vector, we are going to get the right vector. Um, there we go. Right vector. And I'm going to do the same. Right click, split it. And then I'm going to plug the, um, the X into the X and the Z into the Z. So we can now plug this into what direction. And now we can move right left forwards and backwards really cool okay so pretty much the movement is set up so we're going to do is select all press c and command for movement so it's all pretty nice and neat i'm just going to change the color into kind of black darker one because i think it's cooler and there you go so let's add some camera control so we're going to go into edit i'm going to go into private settings I'm gonna go ahead into the input and I'm gonna add some more axis mappings. So I'm gonna add a new one, and this one is gonna be a mouse or a camera. Um uh up and down. And then this is gonna be the mouse Y because it's up and down, and the scale we can leave it at one. And then we're gonna add a new one, which is gonna be the uh, mouse uh right and also left and it's gonna be adding the mouse x there we go so now we can go ahead and close this and we can go into right here and add our uh, mouse uh, up and down in our axis events the one that we have just created and what we're going to do is add a pitch input so we'll basically move it up and down and the axis value will go here now we do have to make one more thing as going into the spring arm and enable use spawn control rotation so we can go ahead and move it so now you will see that we can move it up and down and we can go ahead and move around and the camera will not go crazy so that's really cool uh, i'm gonna be adding also the right and left so mouse right and left in the axis events and instead of uh pitch it's gonna be add jaw input and the axis value we'll go into the value here and that's pretty much it. It's gonna be going ahead and comment this into a uh, camera. So everything is nice and neat. And we're gonna go ahead and copy the exactly same number for the comment. This is just not necessary. It's just things that I like to have so it basically looks better. 
and now I can move the camera freely around. Uh, one more thing as I can to do is go ahead and um, inverse the, uh, what was it, the, uh, actually no, it's good. Uh, it's just sometimes uh, if, you know, you have it inverted, what you can do is just multiply the value by uh, minus one, and then just plug this in and then basically um you will have it inverted but for me actually it's pretty good so so do like that and now what we can do is i'm we're going to do is just uh make this like 450 so it's a bit uh kind of more distance actually that's <laughs> way too much uh 350 uh because i think it was too close to my character so yeah now it's a bit better Okay, so we are pretty much finishing our player controller. So the next thing I'm going to do is just add the jump option and then the animations. It's going to be really quick to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get the space bar. Um, and then what you do is just add a jump event, which is really easy done for us in Unreal Engine. And then we can go ahead and jump. So that's really, really cool. And then it's going to be jump. So I think let's go ahead and uh, rate okay so that's cool also a thing that you can do is go and create also a private settings in inputs a action mapping to jump um player and then the space bar so then you can call um jump player and i just will call it jump because it was already created and just rename it and then it will be it, it's better just to create them from private settings you know Okay, so let's start our animations. So let's go ahead and go into my character. And you can see that I have two animations here. Uh, just one for Ido and uh, one for basically running. See, just Ido and running over here. There we go. Pretty simple. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create an animation blend space 1D. Now I do have a detailed tutorial on how to create a blend space 1D, so I'll be leaving it in the description. So basically a blend space is just how we can basically merge and combine two different animations, well, many animations, depending on uh, one horizontal value, which is gonna be our speed. So we're gonna make it that if the speed is zero, it's gonna be idu, and for example, 250 uh, running. So as the speed increases, it will uh, slowly transition between the two values. So I'm gonna select our skeleton from a player, and it's basically it's gonna be um, oh, it auto saved while I was writing, but name it how you want. In my case, I'm just gonna say um, player tooth run tutorial blend space 1D, and I'm gonna go ahead and open it. So the first thing we're going to do is in axis settings in the horizontal axis, I'm gonna change the name into speed because it's what it is. The minimum is gonna be zero. And let's check what is our maximum speed. So to check this, what we can do is go into our blueprint, into the character movement component, and in the um, max walk speed is right now set to 600. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this a 600. So now our horizontal timeline will go from 0 to 600. So we're gonna add our idle animation in the asset browser, right on the left of everything, where it's zero, and then our run forward right on the right where the speed is 600. And then if I hold shift or con sorry, control, and you move the mouse over, you can see how uh, as the speed increases, it will basically transition from idle to running. So really cool. So now we're gonna just save it and close it. So now we will need one more thing, which is the animation blueprint. And it's basically how, it's basically a blueprint for the animations. Okay, it's all named this Christ way to control everything. So we're gonna go into animation blueprint and we're gonna say it's our character skeleton. It's gonna be AP and then um, player toot. Okay, and go ahead and open it. So you can see that we have our anim grab opened and an event grab opened. We're gonna go into the uh, anim grab. You can see you can just double click in here and we have an output post. Basically what will go out here. So we're gonna go into the asset browser. If you don't see it, I believe that you can go into window and go into asset browser and it will be added. So we can see that we have our blend space over here. So we can just add it and connect it into the output. So now if I compound save, you will see that it will be a idle, a plain idle animation because the speed is right now set at zero. So if I were to set it at 600 and compile, 
you will see how he will be running. So basically, we have to change this value, um, basically depending on the actual uh, speed on our player. So basically, we're going to create a variable. So just right click and promote to variable and it's going to be called speed. There we go. I'm just going to put it on there. There we go. So uh, now what we're going to do is go into the Venn graph. And uh, I do like making my castings on uh, the initialize. So it's going to be on initialize animation. Uh, just because it will do it once at the start. I will not be doing it at the update. I'm going to go move it up. So the reason that we have to cast is that we have to access our player blueprints um, speed. So I just go ahead and say cast to um, BP uh, my character toot and which was my player and then uh, basically this blueprint. Okay. And then what we're going to do is get the um, character movement component down here okay there we go so now we'll get from it the get velocity because we'll need to give the velocity which is down here and you can see that it is a vector we need the float so we can just say vector length to convert it into our uh, float value and now we can go into variables drag our speed set it and it will be our um our velocity from there now I just realized that I did everything on the uh, initialize. So I just unplug this and unplug this and move it down and basically connect it into the uh, update because it will need to do it every time, right? Every frame and then here only one time. The thing is that I was accessing my player one time and then I'm going to be using it. But of course we have to uh, reference. So I'm just going to right click promote to variable and name this uh, BP my character to true. And then I can just drag it and get it and then assign it on here. There we go. So we can compile and save. So now we can go back into our blueprint and into the viewport. And the thing is that we can select our mesh and in animation mode, make sure that it is on use animation blueprint. And then the anim class, well, we're going to be using the um, the AP player toot that we have just created. And because right now the speed is zero, well, it will be just standing there in the auto animation. So now if we go and press play, you can see that we are in Indo, uh, but we, when we start to go ahead and move, you can see that it's playing the front animation. So right now it's looking really, really cool. So that's it guys, if you enjoyed the tutorial and found it very useful, I really appreciate you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Unreal Engine 5 tutorials like this one, so go ahead and check them out. Leave a comment on any uh, tutorial ideas you want to see, and now yes, with all said, bye bye.